Apple cheats on Google, goes with OpenAI for Siri Pro. Welcome to the All Future Podcast, where we talk about everything consumer tech, AI, VR, and partnerships. I thought you were going to say Vision Pro, but sure, partnerships too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so today we're talking about Apple and OpenAI, which famously have not partnered with AI, has no mention of been partnering with AI, and Apple even went as far as to say that they're partnering with Google Gemini on AI for their products. This is serious news because it is a extreme change for Apple to do something like this. Yeah, interesting. And I don't know, I, I could be wrong about this, but I don't know if there's ever like official confirmation they were going to use Gemini. That was just kind of the idea. Um, but And we don't really know what these talks are. But if you're Apple why not talk to everybody, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and OpenEye kind of regarded as the leader in the space in many ways. Why not just, hey guys, what's up? What are you, what are you guys doing over there? How, how can you help us? And this is not crazy for Apple to do. I mean, I can, I can make Bing the default search engine on my iPhone. Like, so maybe Apple's gonna have that kind of setup where you can pick the large language model you wanna use. Not that different from what NVIDIA is doing with their chat uh, GTX system where you can pick Llama or some of the others. Mistral, I think, is the other one. So, yeah, maybe maybe that's where they're going with, and that's what the root of all this is. Yeah, interesting. So we've talked about that, too, like lock in with your LLMs, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning you've used chat GPT or you've used uh, Gemini so much, and it has so much history with you that it'd be really hard to switch. But as we're seeing now, uh, I played with a tool yesterday I got to remember the name of it. I'll, I'll link it in the comments. But really, uh, changing from a model is just easy as clicking a button. And you can even use multiple models at the same time mm -hmm. as long as your processor and your RAM can handle it. And it's super easy to change models. And you can even like have them, if you set it up correctly, check each other's work to make sure it's more accurate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really cool stuff happening in the space so you don't have these lock-in problems. Yep. But uh, why would... Apple want to sign with someone like OpenAI versus a Google Gemini? There could be a multitude of reasons there. So I'm not sure exactly, I mean, who knows what exactly is going on with Apple's master planning on there. But if you're asking from my point of view, I think OpenAI has some interesting advantages over these other companies, both in terms of how they're set up, in terms of the kind of stuff they're doing, and just right now in terms of kind of market penetration in a lot of ways. So you could argue that Gemini is out there. It's all now everyone with Google is used in Gemini or whatever. But really, like if you're a person who does uses AI for work kind of stuff, or actually getting stuff done with AI, almost all those people are exclusively on GPT four. Like so it it's kind of the the proven way to go. So I, I why not go with them? I guess it would be my, my question, right? Yeah, the problem is really we don't know exactly what they're doing with any of these things yet. We mm. don't know how they're gonna integrate uh Gemini or ChatGPT, we don't know that they're not going to use both. What we do know is that Apple is also creating their own LLMs mm. to run locally on device. So that's what's really hard to speculate how they're going to be using either OpenAI or Google Gemini. Mm. And so they open sourced, and we talked about this in an earlier video, a bunch of their little LLMs that are supposed to go directly onto phones. The problem there is that these local LLMs run at about a chat GPT 3.5 level. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to do. So what we don't know is how they're going to layer these devices to actually be useful. And so, okay, the local LLM can pull this kind of data from your phone. Mm -hmm. It can do X, Y, or Z. But really to function, it needs to be sent out to the cloud mm -hmm. and do a smaller request. It's not going to have all your data there. But to something like a chat GPT or a Google Gemini, to execute X, Y, or Z. I don't think either of those things have image generators yet. Uh, we've seen some rumors about Apple putting in image generation things for maybe photos, but mm. it doesn't look like any of these local LLMs are gonna have image generators or anything mm. like that built in, so they'll still need to send out data for those sorts of requests. Lots of things here to where if chat GPT was just performing better on things, then I, that's an easy, you know, conversation to have where it's like, well, you did this better than Google Gemini did. And and it already works great for if we're, you know, bring it back to like we the kind of the Siri of it all, right? Obviously the the main goal of all these things is local run AIs. Like that's what that's what Apple definitely wants to do, I think. But if you're trying to stay in the fight here a little, and so you're looking at that everyone, everyone 
brings up Siri when you talk about Apple and AI, right? Because like for Siri, notorious, not as robust, I would say, as Google Home is. A way you can fix Siri right away is with these off the shelf LLMs, right? Like just outsource all the Siri replies to OpenAI, right? It goes up, obviously this would cost Apple a fortune if, 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 cause you know, you're paying, having to pay for those server times if you're yeah, using. Yeah. yeah, so, but it makes it work now instead of in four or five years from now, once Apple's really defined their local LLM model that they wanna use. And so I think they almost need to do it before everyone has already gone on to other smart home stuff anyway, right? So it's like we it, it gets them in the fight today instead of three or four years from now. Have you used uh, ChatGPT voice on your phone yet? I have I have not. I okay, just, we're going to do this let's right do it. now. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, just I'm to in. show people how much better it is yeah. than Siri is right now. Yeah. And this is like off the rack, unpaid ChatGPT on iOS. It has a little headphone icon right here that you can click and try your voice mode. So go ahead. That took one second to click that button. <laughs> Who was Benjamin Franklin's second child? Benjamin Franklin's second child was a daughter named Sally. Tell me more about Sally. Dali is an AI model developed by OpenAI. <laughs> oh, that right. Oh, I was working so good. Descriptions. It's an extension of the GPT architecture. You should, you should. Trained on a vast data the way to do it would be like, tell me about her. Because that was something that Siri would never be able to figure out. Tell me more about Benjamin Franklin's daughter, Sally. Benjamin Franklin's daughter, Sally Franklin Bocci, was born in 1743. She was the only daughter of Benjamin Franklin and his wife, Deborah Redd. Sally was known for her intelligence and charm. She married Richard Bakke, and together they had eight children. Sally was also known for her strong support of the American Revolution and her involvement in various social and political causes. She played a significant role in her father's life and legacy. Anyways, so like you can talk to this much more like a human and it has more of a human database for everything. So mm -hmm. even just, I think general queries, like not using a search engine, uh, this is, we talk about a lot of these experience like Apple Vision Pro or something on this channel, not being a better experience, even though it's amazing technology. Mm -hmm. This is a better experience to asking questions. And the thing that we don't think about a lot is follow-up questions. Ryan talks about this a lot with his, uh, what are we, Iris, Lady S, or mm -hmm. the devices that we can't say mm -hmm. because it's going to trigger all your devices at mm -hmm. home. But being able to ask follow-up questions yeah. is super helpful uh, for context. So... If you say something like play this and it doesn't get it right and then you can go not this this mm -hmm. you know just immediately it would be you know a really easy thing or like if it got a light command wrong or something like that right. you can go no this is what i meant by this or something no, like it's, that. it's so much smarter I, I use the example the music example all the time we'll, we'll, we'll try not to set anything off i'll say siri and play a song play a madonna song or whatever play play a song from the 80s and then they'll start playing the song and then I can tell it, it well, what you can't do right now is follow that up with contextual stuff. So I, like, I can't follow it up with play similar songs with this beat or another song from what, like, you know, you can't ask it things in a natural language. It can only really, it's really only a voice command system. That's really yeah, what it yeah. is. It's a very advanced voice command system. And so it's that lack of context, which makes Siri suck in all home smart home stuff right now like it's just the the other stuff maybe google maybe works a little bit better just in because it you know whatever steals all your privacy or whatever it's doing but but there none of them work in a great natural language thing they're not true assistants because you can't really follow up stuff you can't talk with about a context clues and things like that with context clues absolutely this is what they have to have and if it if it requires them partnering with open ai to get this into our hands in the next six months they need to do that yeah, that would be awesome. Just to get something like this at WWDC. And even if half the things that we're talking about are implemented and we get half demos into the future of like, this is where we're headed though, I would be super happy with that. We've talked about too how these local LLMs are going to take a lot more processing power, a lot more RAM. And so if I needed to upgrade a phone or I needed to upgrade to a pro phone, that would be like a no-brainer, even if it was in the you know plus $1,000 range to get a Pro Max or something mm. like that. I would probably end up, you know. Me and Ryan were having this discussion on another episode, and that I was, how does Apple make more money than they're making right now? 
uh, which is the the law of capitalism, right? And the problem is smartphone sales essentially is growing with the growth of the population at this point, right? Like, like so, and Mac sales are flat and very small. It's 7% of overall Apple, Apple revenue. So how do you grow that? Well, if I need to, con or don't nearly need to, if I just show everyone how much better a $1,500 iPhone is because it has more RAM or better chips or whatever on it that lets it do in-device AI, boom, that's an easy upsell. If I sell people on at-home AI servers, you know, yeah. that's an easy sell. It's, a, it's, it's opening up product categories to Apple that have either been shut off or are shutting off by having the AI integration in there. And I think people are gonna pay for it because it is gonna be that much better. And we've seen this too with devices like the OpenAI pin or the RabbitR1 that when you send these uh, these requests out, they don't really come back very quickly, you know, depending on whatever LLM they're using. But to, yeah. to, to do all those things, not on device, is going to take a really long time. Mm. And we don't know what kind of magic they have to do right now to put Llama or ChatGPT in a browser or something, and these results come back almost instantly. But uh, really, you know, if it's going to need all this new technology, it will really need to upgrade all your products or need to upgrade all these things if they pitch that local LLM is the way to go. And again, I think that's an easy upsell to people because it's going to be that much better, right? Like what, what exactly does uh, the, an iPhone, the differentiator between right now between the pro and the not pro iPhones, right? You're like, oh, I get one more camera lens. For the standard consumer, that's really the upgrade, right? It's like, oh, I want to have that extra camera. You know, that's uh, everything else. It's essentially running the same. It's transparent. Um, so uh, how can I get those upsells in there? If all of a sudden this thing actually does something way more advanced than the other thing, that's cool. Yeah. I really want things like being able to say to send this file to someone. I'm like, if that file's on my phone or it's in my iCloud, I know what yeah. it's titled and I could say it correctly. It just confirms with me. There's so many times where... I have to take out a laptop or something like that to accomplish that task. Mm -hmm. If that becomes a voice command, I'll buy that product for double that amount of money. Are you kidding me? Because that like speeds up my productivity. It makes it so I don't have to switch context from mm -hmm. whatever I'm, if I'm working on a video edit or if I'm working on a thumbnail or something like that. I don't want to go to search for a file to send this person <laughs> mm -hmm. or really turning those basic tasks into just like snap things that uh, LLM can do, local or not local. I don't care if that has my data to do that sort of thing, but really connecting these things to each other and connecting it to the Apple's ecosystem, making it useful. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that yet. We see a bunch That's, of people promise that yeah. and it's not happening. Yeah, that, that integration doesn't exist yet. And I, I mean, and we've seen that. Well, you have these companies trying to make the all purpose AI device humane that are rabbit. These guys are just getting decimated in reviews, right? And then you could see, I think what NVIDIA is doing is smart. Like they're the chat RTX model, which can, you can tell it what to give access to on your machine. So, it, but really it's still, it's best version of it is still just a really great search almost, mm -hmm. right? Like that's really what it's doing. But once you kind of integrate it, which Apple is known for doing, so that all your hardware and software are all talking together across the board, that's all being managed through an AI interface, then you're, you're, you're rocking then, right? Like that's, that's the future, right? Then you're living in Star Trek. That might be another reason why they might not partner with a Google Gemini, because they're the only other company I can really see that can attack that ecosystem in that way. Because mm -hmm. Google products do work on Apple devices. Mm -hmm. It's the only way you can get, if you've ever had an Android phone and try to transfer to a uh, iPhone <laughs> device, or an Apple device, you really have to put everything on Google first to get the transfer going because mm -hmm. Google is one of the only thing that integrates with Apple. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure they don't want to share data on these sorts mm -hmm. of things. And so if that's your real competition, Google has already partnered with uh, a lot of people on Gemini or other things. You don't want that in your face to, you know, we could just partner with this new company then and mm -hmm. we don't want to share data and they're better than you at all these things. So mm -hmm. why would we need to partner with you? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, 100% the same page with this. Here's here's the question for you though. When does this, we'll call it just Siri Pro, when does this thing need to come out? Are you saying, they? do you think they need to announce this thing at WWDC? Like, or, or yeah, like what, what's Apple's timetable you think? I think we get announcements, hopefully something at this iPad event that's coming soon. We've heard rumors that they're going to. I think the rumors are going a little too far saying they're going to release 
like uh, AI devices then, I don't think that's mm-hmm. smart for anyone. Because if you release an unfinished product, then no one's going to trust you with it anymore. That's that's the, the, the iPad rumor thing kind of throws everything for a loop here and what people are thinking. Because everyone's like, oh, WWDC, they're going to announce AI. And then now all of a sudden the rumor on the iPad Pro event, which is a week from the day when as we're recording this, is that, oh, like the, this is going to be Apple's AI device. And so how are they going to announce their AI device without showing their plan for AI, right? Like, yeah, so- and there's not a lot in the background going on that lets you think that, like, this is going to work great, mm. you know, because we've got uh, the talk about the local LLMs that we were talking about earlier, mm. but those run at a chat GPT 3.5. They're not very accurate. And we, we've seen that they're designed to be more accurate and less creative, which is exactly what you need if you're trying to create a device that does something consistently Mm -hmm. so like they're trying to do that but you don't know what they can do yet so Mm -hmm. it's really tough to you know say that it's going to be ready for launch or something like that none of these products are ready for prime time not even chat gpt for turbo not even close you know (laughs) you have to correct tons of stuff on all of these things and even if we talk about benjamin franklin's daughter (laughs) i i just believe that it is but i if i really wanted to know i'd need to go back and search wikipedia it's not citing its sources yeah there's no like level of fact checking yet so Here's what I hope will happen with this, with the Siri Pro or iPads and M4s, the whole thing, right? Is that there's kind of been this narrative that Apple is behind in AI, but they're going to get up there and go, well, guess what, guys? We used our billions and billions of dollars available to buy all these companies, and we got something that's badass, and it's going to be ready this fall. Yeah, hopefully... It'll just be, and me and Ryan have talked about this too, a set of features, right? Mm -hmm. Don't promise me the world and that everything's going to change and all these ideas that we have about what we think it's going to do are going to be possible because we can think about everything, but everything we think about needs a team of 10 developers to actually (laughs) implement correctly. So you really have to pick and choose the things that you need. And we've already seen Samsung roll out AI. We've already seen Google roll out Gemini for Pixel Mm -hmm. and no one's like you know making videos about these great new things that it can do and how it's <laughs> saving them their productivity for the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I don't want to call it a gimmick, but it's hundred percent is right. Uh, now. It's, it's gimmick features right now. Yeah, like oh, okay, it can write your email for you. How I don't understand. <laughs> like every time I try to think about that, oh, it can draft draft me an email that outlines X, Y, and Z thing. Yeah. And then it just overwrites it. Like in the time I'm writing that, I've written my email. <laughs> you don't need it to be structured and crazy. You right, know, right. you need to just just get the point across. Mm-hmm. Steve Jobs famously like one line emails. That no. Are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're important enough, you don't have to write those long right. emails. You write the little ones that get the point across. You know, mm-hmm. so not really a productivity saver for me, at least. Yeah. So for me, like, I mean, obviously, the tighter that timetable is for Apple, the best. And I think the way to go with it, it's kind of like what you're saying. Deliver here's a list of five things this thing rocks at, which is a very Apple thing to do, you know, kind of like not putting in bells and whistles that they could, but just putting in the things that are actually going to move units that are going to like cite people. And I, I would love if we're a week from today, we're at this table and we're talking about them announcing things at that iPad event, you know? Yeah. That'd be really cool. I'd be happy with WWDC that we just get an announcement. And then they're like, we're not releasing this until the new iPhone comes out in September, Mm -hmm. late 2024, Mm -hmm. you know? And so those are all good timelines. I don't think Apple's behind like everyone's been saying, because there's no killer feature for any of these Mm -hmm. things yet, you know? Well, call centers or yeah. things like that. You, can, things you can't be behind if no one's ahead, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and maybe ahead for businesses, but not ahead for consumer tech or mm-hmm. things that are useful for us. So I think hopefully Apple is focused on those features and hopefully we'll get a Siri Pro announcement at this iPad event. Whether it's OpenAI, whether it's Google Gemini, who cares? We just want the feature set that works for us. All right, we'll see you next week.